Introducing M2. Let's have some fun and talk about gaming. Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. We have just had one hell of a surprising WWDC, including the announcement of the M2 chip, as well as new models of MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. And today I'm going to do a full breakdown of every announcement that relates to gaming and how this is the WWDC that changed Mac gaming forever. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider scrolling down and pressing the subscribe button and be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming news. So the very first big announcement is the fact that we now have a successor to the excellent M1 chip. We now have the M2. This features a second generation five nanometer design, which contains over 20 billion transistors and up to 100 gigabytes per second of unified memory bandwidth, which is 50% more than the original M1 and contains up to 24 gigabytes of unified memory. Like the original M1 chip, it has an eight core CPU and four all of these cores are high performance cores and four of them are high efficiency cores. The M2 CPU will perform 18% faster than the M1 at the same power consumption. And furthermore, the M2 features between eight and 10 GPU cores. This will give the M2 a boost of 25% more performance at the same power consumption and also a 35% boost at a higher rate of power consumption. So the M2 chip looks like it's gonna be a pretty huge upgrade over the original M1 and having up to 35% increase in GPU performance is gonna make a huge difference for gaming. And the next question is which Apple Macs are going to feature the M2 chip? So the main flagship for the base M2 chip is gonna be the MacBook Air, which has been completely redesigned and taken some of the best features of the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, which now features a brand new 13.6 inch display complete with a notch. And this screen is also meant to be 25% brighter than the original MacBook Air. And probably one of the best features about the new MacBook Air is the fact that we now have MagSafe, which frees up two of the Thunderbolt 4 ports. So the MacBook Air with the M2 chip is set out to be a great gaming machine, and it improves on its original design in almost every single way. So what's interesting is that they've also decided to release the MacBook Pro 13 inch with the M2 chip as well. And if you look really carefully, you'll notice that this is an identical design to the original MacBook Pro 13 inch, which to be honest was something I really thought that they were gonna phase out, but they decided to keep the design exactly the same. It even comes complete with touch bar and it won't even have the cool new MacBook Air feature, which is MagSafe 3. But at the end of the day, the MacBook Pro with the M2 chip is gonna perform better in gaming than the MacBook Air with the M2. And that's simply down to the fact that it's the only model which has active cooling. And this is gonna help keep temperatures lower and keep frame rates higher over sustained loads. So Apple finally announced the name of the next version of macOS, and that is macOS Ventura. But as gamers, we don't care about that. What we wanna know about is Apple's new version of their graphics API, Metal. And Metal 3 is gonna bring some brand new AAA graphics features to the Mac operating system. The first of these new features is called Metal FX Upscaling. And this is gonna be a graphics feature that has a lot of similarities to AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution or Nvidia's DLSS. And it basically allows a game to be run at a lower resolution, for example, 1080p, and then it can be upscaled to look very close to 4K resolution. And this can be done whilst applying less pressure to the CPU and GPU. So in theory, this should allow much better performance whilst maintaining similar image quality. And also Metal 3 is gonna have access to the new fast resource loading API. This is gonna allow games to stream data directly from the solid state drive more quickly. And this sounds like it has a lot of similarities with Microsoft's own direct storage API. And what's cool about these new features of Metal 3 is that it seems to bring us closer and closer to feature parity with other graphics APIs, for example, DirectX 12. And this really opens up the door for other future AAA game ports to come to the M1 Mac. So the next announcement is the fact that we have three AAA games ported to the M1 Mac. And what all of these games have in common is that they're completely unplayable on M1 hardware, even using compatibility layer like Crossover or a virtual machine like Parallels. And the first one is one of the most requested games that people ask me to try and get running on the M1 chip, and that is No Man's Sky. And the Windows version of this game is unplayable on M1 hardware because it uses the Vulkan graphics API, but this has now been ported to Metal. And because of this, it's also gonna get a release on iPad OS. And this shows that one of the best benefits of working with Apple Silicon is the fact that you can port it to multiple devices within the Apple ecosystem. So next up is the game Grid Legends. And for quite a while now, I thought that this game's Steam DB entry was actually trolling us because it said that this had a native ARM version running on macOS. And it turned out that Steam DB was right all along. And Feral have officially announced that they have been working on Grid Legends and this is gonna be released in the very near future, running on native Mac hardware. 
And this is fantastic as the Apple Silicon Mac really needs some AAA racing games. And this is gonna be a great addition to the platform. And the last and possibly coolest announcement of this entire WWDC is the fact that we're now getting Resident Evil Village ported to native Apple Silicon hardware. And this one is definitely one of the biggest surprise announcements. Firstly is the fact that Resident Evil Village on Windows is a DirectX 12 title. And to date so far, we haven't had any DirectX 12 games working on the M1 Mac. Therefore, the fact that this has been ported to Metal 3 really means that there must be some feature parity between DirectX 12 and Metal 3, which is allowing this game to run on Apple Silicon hardware. Second is the fact that Resident Evil is published by Capcom, and Japanese companies tend not to take desktop platforms very seriously as gaming platforms. And so the fact that Apple have convinced Capcom to port their AAA game to native Apple Silicon hardware is something that is really, really surprising. And who knows, maybe other Japanese companies will follow suit and will get games like Elden Ring running natively on Apple Silicon hardware in the future. So I really think that it's very surprising that Apple even mentioned Mac gaming at all at this WWDC. We managed to get brand new upgraded hardware, got a new graphics API with extended features, and we also got three AAA ports announced as well. And hopefully this means that Apple has a renewed interest in gaming on the Mac. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you thought about this WWDC. If you liked the video, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.